Hello everyone and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. This time I'm going to address the fact that many people are right now disappointed and leaving Destiny for the way that Bungie has led the game so far. To start things off I'm going to start by saying what's the state of the game now? Now, now people are, you know, they're not really engaged in the game, they feel there's too much grind, I mean the gamers are not really happy with how the game is at its standing point. And some of them are starting to, you know, maybe getting a bit fed up with the game, feeling it's a bit too grinding and becoming more of a chore than an actually fun thing to play every day. Now, there are some issues, there are some things I want to talk to you about. And to start things off, I'm going to start by talking about the problems that Destiny 2 has. Good ideas, but bad execution. To start things off, there were some good ideas that were implemented in D2, but they weren't really that much big of a change between D D2 and D1. Uh, there was nothing really new in terms of classes or subclasses, there was nothing really different in terms of locations. Even some of the exotics are exactly the same as D1. So this starting for a 2 game, well, it didn't quite make the community engage as much as it did, that's why Osiris and Warmind were really bad at start. Now, we have some new exotics, but the exotics are not exactly the main exotics that you were hoping for in the game, like the Galahorn or the Vex Mictoclast, or even the Outbreak. The Outbreak quest was really fun, and the, uh, the weapon was a bit overpowerful, but as soon as the next exotic is announced, they, they have to tone down or nerf the, the later exotics for people to grind for the next one. Another thing that they had, uh, that they added to the game, was Armor 2.0. I'm a big fan of mods in games, if they work, and in Armor 2.0, well, they don't exactly work really well, you know, you can have the mods, you can implement them on a character, but the change in gameplay isn't really all that felt or all that good. Sure, some stats change, but if you're gearing towards mods, or if you're gearing towards a new broken exotics like, say, the One-Eyed Mask, or the Yotun, or the Lord of Wolves, you know, Having mods doesn't really change that, so those are problems that uh, Destiny 2 had right from the get-go. And those problems just become incremental when the game starts to have other problems, like the one I'm going to speak next. More content doesn't always mean better content. You know, in D1 you had like a handful of activities you did after you made the, f the campaign and in the end game. Those were Nightfalls, Raids, Challenge of Elders, Trials, and the occasional Iron Banner, and Raids. Now, these were five only options that you could do, all of them, after you reach the uh, cap level. And the cap level was only about 10 points from the max stat of the game. So, when you reach the end game, you only had to upgrade 10 times, you know, 10 upgrades. And these called for a very very important part of the LFG um, you know looking for guardian uh, sub apps and the clans themselves to work harder on the community to achieve those goals because there weren't that much goals to achieve so you had time and you can do all of them together in destiny 2 you have a lot more activities you have the nightfall you have the nightfall ordeal you have the raid multiple raids right now you have gambit with gambit prime and reckoning you have crucible competitive which you know it brings people but it doesn't bring as much people as as trials did and you have nightmare hunts and you have uh, a lot of what i call super spamming events which is like the menagerie the altar of sorrow the blind well the sundial the vex offensive and all these activities all of them require a certain power level to get to and the grind for the power level isn't as easy as it was on Destiny 1. In Destiny 1, every time you did a Nightfall or a Raid, you get a piece that was on, on uh, you know, for the next level. Here, it isn't as easy or as direct to do that. You have um, a piece on your menu that you can upgrade, but then you have to do pinnacle weapons or you have to do uh, pinnacle activities to get that specific gear. And those uh, those activities, since they are so spread out, uh, 
a lot of times you can't really find people to do exactly what you're doing because then there comes another exotic quest and then comes another thing on the on the on the horizon and you're kind of you know lost in what you should do and that kind of um you know kind of spreads out the community and the players throughout a lot of a lot of activities that other players don't want to be now this would be fine if the lfg was already implemented in the game or there was a matchmaking already implemented in all the activities now for raids i understand that matchmaking uh, shouldn't be used because uh, raids are somewhat of a coordinate and specific kind of uh, cooperative activity that you have to do but for everything else i don't understand why you have sundial and then you have legend sundial and there's no matchmaking there we've all done the sundial we know what we're going to do if you do nightfalls and then you have nightfalls of the certain power level you already done the nightfall why can't you match make for the for the specific nightfall that you want to do and if you want to do uh, i don't know bit of heresy shutter throne all those activities okay the first time i understand you should maybe have someone that knows what to do okay but the, since you already completed the first time you should be able to either matchmake there or maybe an LFG so you can do the activities you want to do you have to understand these activities are hard to do they take some time and you need people that know what they're doing clans most of the times can you know aggregate a lot of people and they have to do it. but these are big clans I'm in a clan where I have 10 people on my clan 10 I never have like 20 people playing at the same time I have like 10 people maybe you know the most times we get is about six and not all of us have you know work together to do the activities we want to do so the the number of activities is so big and so spread out that you can't really find people to do the same things you do so most of the times what people do is pvp because in pvp you can have one two three four five up to six people doing the same activity together but then there's a problem if you only do pvp when are you going to do the pve activities and when you are you going to find people that do it and for a game that has recently become free to play in new light and has a lot of casuals and people just trying the game for the first time people walk in and then they, when they see they can't do the activity sure they can go to lfg and try to look for it but most people see so many activities with so many things they need to do that they just give up and just put the controller down and they go like you know what maybe this is for me this is too big of a mountain this is a too complicated of a system that I just don't want to get into because the power climb is too big and because the mods don't do anything and I have weapons that I don't know what I'm going to do with them so they just abandon the game even if you started with Forsaken and you have the forges and the forges are good activities to get some good loot like the menagerie even if you try and do to, to do them and they can do matchmaking well most of the weapons now you can already acquire better ones or new ones in other activities and sometimes you just don't have the time to grind for the elements to go to do the weapons on the forges and on the menagerie so you're stuck with doing the same activities that you don't want to do to get the things that you don't even know are f if they're good or not and then when a role comes out and it's not the role that you want you have to start all over again and this is a big problem because it takes too much time and you get too much frustration out of it and you are not enjoying the game you're just grinding to get something that you're not even sure that you're gonna do or not now this is one of the problems and the third and major problem that I have with destiny and that's why I believe it's the main reason people are leaving is monetization this is a huge problem in destiny 2 nowadays because let's face it the reason we play these games is because of the loot but now most of the actual good loot that you can get everything everything worth having is on the in-game store eververse i mean good luck trying to get an ornament for a weapon or a gear on the engrams that you decipher you know it used to be like you play the game you get some primes and you power and you level up or power up uh, for the next for the next level or you get an engram and that engram deciphered gave you the specific loot of that season and you would still have an in-game store but now everything's on an in-game store absolutely everything you can't get a shell a ship an ornament that you want outside the eververse 
and the Eververse has two ways of acquiring things for the Ever. One is silver, which is basically you pay for what you want you want to get, and the other it's bright dust. Bright dust is an in-game currency that you can acquire during the game doing bounties. Now the problem is, even if you do all the bounties that you could do with one character, you cannot make enough bright dust to get the ornament you want from the Eververse. And the ornament isn't always on bright dust. Sometimes, mostly, uh, most of the of the things are in silver. So you absolutely have to pay for the things you want to you want to have in the game. And that's a really really big letdown from Bungie because Bungie, when it was with Activision, said that most of the monetization that they had to do, it was they were being quote unquote forced to do by Activision and now Activision is gone and they just keep m the monetization up and up and up and up and up and up on the Eververse and it becomes just tiresome for people who you know before play the game and get something out of it like an ornament or something nice that they could show you know I got this ornament or I got this weapon or, or this weapon ornament or something now you can't get anything everything has to be on the Eververse Nobody, nothing drops nothing is winnable you have to absolutely grind for the bounty now this brings me to one of the big issues that most m of my clanmates left the uh, Destiny and most, I believe, many people are leaving Destiny. The monetization is just getting too out of hand. I mean, we were all, you know, just, you know, we understood that it had to be an in-game store for some things, but not for everything. And we paid the base game and then we bought the expansion and somehow Bungie introduced the annual pass in Forsaken. And I was against it. I don't feel that when we buy a game and we buy an expansion that we have to buy the things that already should be in the expansion. You either sell everything together or you don't. You're not going to buy one thing and then another and another and another during the year. That's that's not how games should be and that's not Destiny 1 was and everybody loved Destiny for being the way it was. Now, when the Annual Pass came out with the Forsaken, and many people were against it, I was against it, but the activities started, you know, to roll out and we started to see, yes, the forges were interesting and yes, the, the Gambit Prime was different from the Gambit normal and we had Reckoning. But to a certain degree, it all becomes a little bit redundant because the things now are on Gambit as they are. Gambit is one of the activities that uh, that is make or break in, the, in Destiny. Either you go there and you like it or you go in there and you just don't like it so you don't pick it up. Me personally, I go into Gambit, I do the pinnacle for the season and I never return there ever. So you have an activity that is paid for but is not giving you the reward. Forges, nobody touches them. Menagerie, yes, you can touch them for some weapons. Otherwise, you're never going to touch them again. And now Activision is out and they put the season pass in it. And it's not even an animal pass that you can buy and have all everything that the year has on to offer on terms of weapons or whatever. It's seasonal. I mean, each three months you have to buy a pass to play a certain activity to get a certain loot. Otherwise, the loot just is going to go away and you're never going to see it again and that's it. And it's the same with the ornaments, the same with the ships, the same with shells, the same with everything. So you absolutely have to be there on the day, every day, playing just to, you know, get the reward, maybe the bright dust enough to get the reward that you want. Now, the the first season uh, was free, so to speak, because it was in, in imbued in Shadowkeep, but the next season, Season of the Dawn, I bought it, and the only thing the Season of the Dawn offers as a season pass, exactly like the first season of the Undying, is an ornament for your gear. That's it. An ornament for a gear, an ornament for an, uh, uh, an already uh, announced exotic, and uh, an emote. That's it. Three things. That's all that you have. You know, I know how, the season, how season passes are in other games, especially on Fortnite, because my nephew keeps playing it, and I've seen what that season pass is, and you have at least, at least nine ornaments which is nine skins and any of those skins has three variations of it. This is one season pass for Fortnite and Fortnite has an in-game in -game store. So I feel Bungie is just pushing the limits of how much money they can squeeze out of people in this and I'm not, I'm totally against it. So to me, no more season passes. I'm not going to buy any other season pass and I'm only playing the game now for the season pinnacles because I believe some of them will be good, some of them won't, but that's it. Now, all this together, 
you know the 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 game being you no know, much of the same that it was before then the grind for everything you want has to be on eververse then the activities there are too diluted or too dispersed and too many raids and too many this and too many that makes the people you know just being overwhelmed with things that they are not getting the reward they got they're supposed to have in the activity if you went on destiny and you did one activity and that activity could or or not maybe give you the reward you want like the ornament of this weapon drops here or the gear uh, of this ornament drops there or maybe the <coughs> the mods that are super mods will drop there that would make maybe the people return to it but instead you have this grind now you have the grind for the obelisks for the mods for the resources and it just becomes too much of the grind instead of too much of the fun of playing the game and getting something you want as I stated before, most of my clan just goes into PvP and does the thing with their friends and, that, and that's it. But for the other activities, you know, I still don't have my Izanami. I still don't, uh, haven't done any of the raids here. And we used to raid like every week we would raid like the two or three raids. And now we have more raids and nobody wants to raid because there's nothing there that we want or that we need or that's somehow fun. Not even an ornament, not even anything. So people just stop playing they say they seem gonna think I'm gonna play for what T to have brightness to buy the Eververse for an ornament that's it I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do maybe an emblem I'm gonna achieve something like the unbroken medallion or something like that and people are just fed up with it so most people are just abandoning the game because they feel that it's a chore to play it's like a job it's like you have to do this to get that just over and over again and people just get fed up and they just leave the game I want to see that change a little and I want them to start respecting what we do, our time, our fun, so we can continue to be fans and not leave the game like most of us are already. Peace out everyone.